Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I got my partner in crime, Big Pet Sports Talk, next to me. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, a thing called Know Your Giant. And we're going to start this off with the controversial draft pick in the second round. Wandale Robinson. A lot of people didn't know who he was. Didn't, you know, nobody really watches Kentucky football. We're going to break this down. And I'm excited to have my guy, Pat. Pat, what you think about Wandell? I, I want your, your first thoughts before we look into all this information. I know you studied this guy a lot, but. <clears throat> well, Wandell Robinson, this is for the people who are doing your famous thing. Yeah, Wandell Robinson, he, he, why you pick him in the second round? You could have had George Pickens. You could have had Sky Moore. You could have had him. You could have had that guy. <laughs> Listen, bro, these guys, Joe Shane and Davo, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they want. Davo and Kafka had know exactly what they wanted for their off wanted for their offense. And this guy, I think, fits it perfectly. Wondell Robinson, yes, he's small in stature, 5'8, 178, 180. Um, he was the second round pick, the number 43 overall pick out of Kentucky. Now you go, oh, he's out of Kentucky. What do you do in Kentucky? Well, this guy was just one of the number one rated receivers as far as PFF, as far as receiver rating at 91.3. 104 catches, 1,330 yards, eight touchdowns at Kentucky with a quarterback that is that wasn't that great. When I say this kid can make tough catches over the middle and take a wallop and get right back up and go at it again, only thing you need to do is watch on this kid, man, is watch that Iowa game. I actually watched that Iowa game live, and he was the only reason why they won that game. The last drive, I believe he got all 86 yards to get that touchdown at the very end to win that game. One catch in particular, he went across the middle, Bad pass, he jumps up and takes a vicious hit. Everybody and their mama thought he would be out of the game. Laid on the ground for about a little minute, got back up, took his helmet off, started cheering, got the crowd hype, came back in the next play, made a 50-yard gain all the way down to the three-yard line. After taking a hit, bouncing off, and getting into the, in, into the red zone. This kid has good route running. <clears throat> I believe working with Kafka, he'll turn into a great route runner. This yes. guy can actually beat you on his route, and you know the route is coming. But he's just that quick. He's just cat quick like that to where you can't get to the outside if you're not already in position. So imagine when they teach him how to run his routes without portraying his route from the get-go. Imagine him be able to do a double move. Imagine him be able to catch a screen and run off. I could keep going on and on, but I'm going to let Joe take it over because oh. this, this guy can – this guy, he's he's dynamic, man. Everybody right. wants to say Kad Kadarius Tony clone. He's not a Kadarius Tony clone. He's Wondell Robinson. And Kadarius Tony is a Kadarius Tony. So all those stupid rumors, oh, we drafted someone just like Kadarius Tony. <laughs> that means we must be getting ready to get rid of Tony. That's how, that's how you guys think. That's not how GM thinks. Right. And that's why we're on YouTube and they're at the New York Giants facility. So uh, I, that's just a little bit what I have to say about the guy. But you, go ahead, Joe. Man, let's delve right into these stats, man. Look at this. He was at Nebraska, guys, and he transferred to Kentucky. And he said he was the number – he was picked in the second round because he went to Kentucky. Look at his numbers as a freshman and then a sophomore. And then when he went to Kentucky, he left the Big Ten, went to the SEC. He went to a harder division. In his last year, 1,334 yards, 104 receptions. Uh, what's, the, what's the G? That's how many games he played. He All did right, that so in 13 in games. 13, thank you. He averaged 12.8 yards, seven touchdowns, seven attempts rushing, 111 yards for almost 16-yard average. 
111 plays from scrimmage, 1,445 yards, 13 yards, average seven touchdowns. That's his senior year. Overall, look at his numbers. His career overall, 195 receptions, 2,248 2, yards, an 11.5 average, 10 touchdowns, 141 attempts for almost 700 yards with almost five yards averaging rushing with four touchdowns. 336 plays for almost 3,000 yards with an average of 8.7 and 14 touchdowns. How can you not look at that and go, yeah, that guy is worthy of a second round pick? I just want to say something real quick. Go ahead. <clears throat> when you look at this guy, man, every time he touched the ball, it was almost a first down throughout his whole career. At his senior year with Kentucky, Every time he touched the ball, it was a first down based mm -hmm. on his averages. That's not a player that you want on your team. That man, average per play, he touched the damn ball, was 13 yards. Mm -hmm. That says explosion to me. Yep. That says that's moving the chains. That says we're getting yards. And if you want to look at his stats overall – Nebraska wasn't using him correctly. That's why I say scheme matters. Yes. Scheme matters. In two years at Nebraska, you only got 91 receptions for a little over 900 yards and three touchdowns. But mm -hmm. what do you know? You take him to a division that passes the ball and wanted to use him as a receiver. <laughs> Love it. He doubles, almost doubles, his contribution to the team with the with with Kentucky, who does who, who's not even known to have a good quarterback, but they used him as a receiver. His rushing attempts went from eighty eight and forty six at Nebraska to Kentucky. They was like, man, no, this dude's a receiver. It went to seven, seven rushes. But guess what? Those seven rushes. Guess what? He went from fifty one being his. Highest at Nebraska as far as receptions to 104. He doubled his production. Yes. Yes. And as far as receiving yards, he damn near tripled his production. And as far as touchdowns, he did seven times more touchdowns than he did in Nebraska. And he doubled his pr production in two years at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You want some more from scrimmage? His junior, his sophomore year to his junior year at Kentucky, he doubled his yards from scrimmage a little bit over that. Yep. His average yards, he almost doubled. So all that stuff that you were telling me, I'm not trying to bring up the Daniel Jones situation. I'm just bringing up this situation here. Right. When you right. tell me scheme and coaching don't matter and you're just supposed to overcome everything, this graphic right here shows you what coaching and what scheme does for a player who has talent. Yes. This is fact. I don't want to. I don't want to go off, but this no, is go fact. off, man. This is dude, Pat. This is the one guy that you you went nuts on because everybody thirty seconds after he was a giant is like, who do, who the hell is this guy? He sucks. No, you've had a lot to say on this, man. Shout it out. What this graphic that you're looking at right here is absolute fact. You can't deny it. It happened. In three years of college, he almost had 3,000 yards from scrimmage. And his first two years, his freshman and sophomore year, were, were with Nebraska, who wasn't even using him correctly. Imagine if he was with Kentucky his whole college career. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Imagine that. And everyone thinks Nebraska is a really good team, too, Pat. I mean, they're always in the hunt for, you know, bowl games, division titles. Yeah, Back in the are, 80s, but... Nebraska was the school, school to go to. I mean, them and Florida State were tearing it up. Yeah, when they had Nebraska, when they had Eric Crouch and those guys, yeah. Yes. 
I know a little bit of Nebraska Phillips? history as well. Phillips with Nebraska there, the running yeah. back that got in Phillips. trouble. Yeah. Good yeah. job, oh, man. He was fire. He was the he was the stuff in college. I, I yeah, he that. was. He was. But I mean, just look at this this chart alone should tell you that scheme matters. And guess what? We have a coaching staff that will probably use them in the same exact way, in the same exact fashion. Saw the talent. Why we drafted him in the second round. Looking at this, now do you guys see why that Shane and company wanted him at second instead of waiting until try to get him in the third? This is talent. You look at this as a scouting evaluator. This is talent. This is what you want to see. This is one guy that you can go to your boss and say, yo, Mr. Shane, this guy's going to be fire. Keep an eye on him. You want another stat that I'm looking at? Nebraska was using him as a rusher primarily, but when you used him as a receiver, what he was supposed to be used, his average yards per attempt tripled. <laughs> Scheme matters. <laughs> it, 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 it tripled, all right. It more than tripled. His last year at Nebraska to Kentucky, it more than tripled. This man had almost 40 more attempts at Nebraska his sophomore year. And he almost got half the amount of yards that he got at Nebraska in his senior year with Kentucky. Yes. Now imagine if that was 45 attempts at that clip right there. But you know why it'll never be that high? Is because they knew how to use them. Oh, he got most of his catches at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a freaking tell you something that he's out there juking people and getting yardage, breaking getting tackles, yak, breaking playmaker. tackles, a playmaker. I want to give a damn if I threw you threw the ball to you 150 times at the one yard line. If right. you get 2,000 yards, you're doing something correct, sir. Yes, I'm gonna keep doing it too until they stop it. Since when does it matter how you get the yards? Just get the yards. Get the production. I don't care about his production. This is not a quarterback. This is a receiver. Now, if it was a quarterback that was throwing screen passes and got 3,000 yards because everybody was juking everybody out, then yeah. Yep. But this is a receiver. This is what he's supposed to do. I don't care if you're getting 60-yard bombs or you're catching at the one-yard line and taking it 65 yards to the house. It's still 60 yards, no matter how you get it. You fans need to get out of that, bro. I'm gl Man, I'm so glad you did this video. <laughs> I knew now you were people the guy for see, this episode. Yeah, now people can see what I was talking about. I'm not yes. just saying some st stupid shit off the top of my head, bro. Well, let's delve into it even further, Pat, because I got another list. Here's what this kid has done this year. It's a long list. This is this year. Not his freshman or sophomore. This this year. Second team All-American. First team All-SEC. Second team All-SEC. U.S. Today All-Pro team. V-Bros Citrus Bowl M V. P, not the quarterback, not the running back, a receiver was the Citrus Bowl MVP. He's the Lexington Herald Sports Figure of the Year, Paul Horning Award winner, Bolichnikov winner. Hold, hold right there. Those okay. two right there. The Paul Hornick Award watch list, nation's most versatile player. What the hell did Debo and Shane say they want their players to be? Versatile. Yes. They got the nation's most versatile player. Yes. Blitnikoff Award winner. Yep. Watch list. Nation's top receiver. Not one of the best. Nation's top receiver. And that beats out everybody else that was in the draft. The Blitnikoff Award. He's, he's, there's nobody better than him. When you award him the Blitnikoff, his junior year. This is all last year. And this is a long list, ladies and gentlemen. This is long. This guy's got some awards.
can I read the rest of this list? Go man? for it, my guy. Go for it. I mean, this is I, I brought you on because you know you I know how much this got you. And I want to have other people on when I do other know your giants players too. But for the preview, I mean Pat really wanted to delve into this, and that's what we're doing. Go for it. Ranked fourth nationally and second in the SEC, the top division in college football. And it's not even close. Second in the SEC in receptions per game at eight. Ranked 11th nationally and second in the SEC again in total receiving yards. Ranked 12th nationally and second in the SEC in receiving yards per game. He hasn't fallen be below second yet, has he? Ranked 10th in the SEC in receiving touchdowns at seven. You want to knock him on that? Go ahead. But he had like the eighth best quarterback in the SEC, in my opinion. Right. Ranked sixth in the SEC in all purpose yards per game at 112 yards per game. Played 31 career games with 25 starts. Total 1,334 receiving yards, a new single season record at University of Kentucky. Yep. Total the school record of 104 catches. So he set the school record record in catches and receiving yards his only year at Kentucky. Yes. Think about that. Became the sixth player in SEC history to catch at least 100 passes in a season. Had six 100-yard games, second on uh, Kentucky single season list. There goes second. He's either first or second. Yep. Although he played only one season at University of Kentucky, he ranked 17th in school history and receiving yardage. And he only played one year. Top 20, and he only played one year. Yep. Yep. One of only two players in school history, Randall Cobb is the other one, that had multiple games of at least 12 catches. Started all 13 games. Hey, injuries. He, right. He doesn't have them. Caught at least four passes in all 13 games he played. Caught at least four. There goes that game at Iowa. Caught 10 passes for 170 yards versus Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. Both of which are Kentucky Bowl records. This guy set records. Right. Caught eight passes for a career best 181 yards over New Mexico State. Highest single game total in school history. Most since Craig Yee's uh, record of 269. Caught a career long 79 yard pass in the second quarter. Baller. Had nine plus catches in three straight games against. The number one ranked defense in the league, Georgia, Mississippi State, very good defense. Tennessee, eh. But he caught nine passes against the number one ranked team in the nation as far as defense. Right. The, the, the uh, uh, what does it call it? The uh, bowl, the, they won the championship. They won yeah. the champ. Georgia won the championship. Yep. Well, we saw how ferocious that defense was. But yet, Kentucky, the receiver did that? Right. Because we all know how that line was and the quarterback was, but he still balled off against Georgia? <sighs> Come on. And, man, this list is just too long to go. And this oh, is a guy that sucks? Here, I'm, I'm going to scroll down through it for everybody. We're still going. Look at all this. Look at all that. First cat with a 100-yard receiving game in an SEC opener since Garrett Johnson at Florida in 2014. And then it goes into what he did as a sophomore, and we know what he did at Nebraska. He was not used. But when he was used correctly, do you see where he stacks up against everybody else in the SEC? Not the Big Ten. The SEC, because everyone says Big Ten receivers are not what they're supposed to be. So he went to the SEC and said, I'm going to show you guys what I can do. He went and did it. And I've heard everybody say SEC receivers aren't that good. You know, maybe C.D. Lamb was the best one. But you look at that list of accomplishments right there. We only read off half of them. That's ridiculous. This kid right here. This kid right here. That's ridiculous. 
Do your research before you bash somebody. Do your research just because he's 5'8 doesn't mean he can't be a good receiver. There's plenty of small receivers that are in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Do your research, man. That's a mic drop right there. That's exactly <laughs> what they want. That's exactly what they wanted. Well, we're giving it to a big blue crew, baby, in the house. So you, you go tell a guy that has all those accomplishments in one year at Kentucky, one of the worst schools in the SEC. But they've been balling lately. I ain't going to lie to you. They've been playing yes, some good yes, ball. Yes, they have. That program's definitely on the rise. And you're going to tell me a guy that caught 104 passes for 1,334 yards and seven touchdowns. Is a bum? <laughs> if that guy was on the Giants, he'd be a hero. Right. He would be right. a hero. Oh, we're going to have George Pickens. Go look up George Pickens' stats. Hell, go look at how many games that he just played. Oh, you want a George Pickens because they show a highlight of him making some uh, – uh, leaping in the air catches or diving on the ground catches a couple of times. That's that. That that's what makes George Pickens better. Because you don't watch film, you don't even look at the stats. Oh, that, that I, I like him because they 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 show him with a couple of highlights. He he's great. Man, go talk to this kid that's been in the trenches. Right. That's been getting his block knocked off, but he's still playing on the field. Go talk to a kid that transferred to a, a better conference and tripled his numbers because he yeah. wasn't being used right in Nebraska. And you're going to tell me scheme don't matter? Are you crazy? Scheme matters. Yeah. Those numbers right there prove it. Right. If he didn't transfer, guess what? He would have been undrafted playing at Nebraska. Yep. Yep. But one great decision in transferring to Kentucky got him to be a second round pick. One welcome, scheme change changed his life. To the Giants. Yeah. He sucks. I don't know who's this guy. But I'll say he sucks. I don't know who he is. But one scheme change got here. this guy a couple of million dollars more than he would have had. Now over four years, he's probably going to get around eight million. Instead of being on somebody's practice squad. At $100,000. One scheme made this man rich compared to what he would have been. Right. Think about that. And I'm happy he's a giant. That's why I did this video. I'm excited to see this kid. I want to see what him and Tony can do. I want to see what this new old line is going to look like. I think we're going to have some time. This team just looks like it's on a better track right now. And I will say this right now, from the last five years, this team is definitely 100% improved from the last right. five years. Right. Right now. Yes. I haven't seen them play, but I'll guarantee you they're a hell of a lot better than what they were the last five years. Well said, fix the O-line. We fix the O-line. We all need to get Daniel Jones weapons. <laughs> Shane got him a weapon. We got to get Blake Martindale some guys. They got Wake Martindale, some guys, and you know what? I'm going to be breaking this all down. I'm going to have this know your Giants player. That way we're all well-informed, and we all see exactly what's going on with these guys, whether they will be a bust, whether they will be a prolific playmaker in the NFL. This guy's going to be prolific. I'm calling it right now. You don't work that hard and then transfer to another school, walk onto it, and throw up that type of numbers. Not without talent. Right. Pat, this kid's going to be something. We all get to I watch him grow. I can't wait to see him on the field. Me either. I can't wait to see him in, in, in even a, a, a practice. Right. Hell, preseason game. I can't wait to see that kid out there. Preseason. And this is going to be a fun preseason, too. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun season leading up to it. But that's your breakdown. Know your Giants player. 
I appreciate everybody who watched and stayed into it this long. Please like, subscribe, ring that bell, get notified. Pat, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Oh, man, I got to do more of these. I love this series already. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe this might, you know, you have me on interactions, maybe you and me, and we'll just have a special guest maybe, you know, when we start doing different players. Maybe we'll take it from there, but we'll definitely talk about it. Chat, let us know what you see in the description. Do you, you know, what ideas do you have? Who do you want to see next? And know your giant. I'm going to be dropping these, you know, in the board. And Pat does his premieres in the evening. So we're going to keep you guys covered 24-7 when it comes to the New York football giants. We're going to put in a lot of hard work. And we appreciate y'all being here. But until next time, folks, y'all have a great morning. Peace. Peace.